This is Small Business Conversations with Akona Machoba, unlocking essential advice, opinions, and key issues that affect South Africa's small business community. Thank you for tuning in to the latest edition of the Small Business Conversations podcast, Manweb's weekly SME show highlighting critical issues affecting South Africa's small business environment. Now, this week on the podcast, I am joined by the CEO of the Heavy Chef Foundation, Louis Janse van Rensburg, to have a chat about their latest work aimed at understanding how the way entrepreneurs behave impacts business success. This time around, Heavy Chef, through the Entrepreneur Networks report, focuses on the role that networks play in making making the entrepreneurship journey a lot easier and maybe more tuned for success. Welcome to the show, Louis, and thank you for joining us. Good to speak to you. So can you briefly just walk us through the, this latest research? What new information does it reveal about the role of networking in the entrepreneurship space and in turn the impact that it has on success? Yeah, I think every entrepreneur knows that a big part of their success is the sum of the relationships they've had over the years. The Heavy Chef Foundation has been conducting research around all manner of topics impacting entrepreneurs, including um, the latest uh, technology trends. But this time around, we wanted to look at the role of relationships. And what was quite interesting in our findings was that your own personal network isn't just an important part of your success. We found that it's actually the strongest predictor of success for entrepreneurs. And every time we speak to entrepreneurs and depending on who you speak to, some would say, you know, personality traits like grit or access to money and those kind of, or or like, you know, the education institution you went to is the things that almost guarantees you success. But it turns out it's actually the people that you meet in all those things and the, the people that you interact with that help you make a success. And what are the other key findings that came out of the research that you'd like to highlight that you think were quite important? Well, the first thing is that the research we conducted was with small businesses. And to be a bit more specific, it's uh, micro-sized businesses, meaning people who employ less than 10 people. This turns out actually is 91% of SMMEs in the country. The story of entrepreneurship in the country is one of the solopreneur, where the founder is the business. Where the founder, if he or she walks away from the business, things tend to fall apart or go wrong quite quickly. And this means that these entrepreneurs, due to the demands of running a business and starting a business, do not get a lot of time to interact with other entrepreneurs. In our research, we found that they have a strong appetite to network with entrepreneurs. They see other entrepreneurs in particular as conduits to growth and access to resources and opportunities. But the demands of their business is just too much because they have to focus on the work that's in front of them. And that's a major barrier. So our research found that we are really a, a network of disconnected entrepreneurs, which we call solo networks. But those entrepreneurs that have access to other entrepreneurs have indicated that they have a high degree of value of learning that they get from those entrepreneurs and value in terms of the impact of their businesses. The, one of the major things that we found was that when entrepreneurs were asked, well, what is the percentage impact that another entrepreneur can have or the right connection can have on your business? Uh, the majority of them said about 75 to 100% impact on their business. That means doubling the size and the revenue of what they currently have if they meet the right person. So they're working hard to find the right people. I think that point you mentioned earlier about the elements that we've come to know to be important for an entrepreneur to succeed, like you mentioned, personality. And I think also um, Heavy Chef mentioned funding and um, access to resources as what we've traditionally known to be key to entrepreneurship success. But from what I've seen, Heavy Chef is suggesting now that networking alone is essentially trumps the power of these other elements in terms of driving success. Do I understand that correctly? Are you saying that who I know is more important than how much I have in my bank account? Well, ultimately, it comes down to how much you have in your bank account. But even the likes of Elon Musk is surrounded by when he started out by some of the smartest individuals around and is the success that he's achieved has been because of those connections and the learnings between those even the smartest entrepreneurs if they go at it alone 
don't make it as far as they can. Those things like personality traits and access to capital are, remain important, no doubt, and critical, and they do give you an advantage. But what we are saying, in fact, is that the group of people that you have around you and the, the frequency and quality of interacting with entrepreneurs is the thing that is almost like the umbrella around it. If you think about like, you know, if you say like access to capital, how do you get access to capital? You need to know people who has access to capital and have those relationships. So we've identified 10 entrepreneur network types that we investigated this um, finding and looked at this finding through the lens of those 10 network types from funding networks right through to peer networks and expert networks. Even technology networks is a new category that we've identified as becoming crucially important. All these things make up the sum of the relationships that you have that impact your success. So ultimately, it kind of ties down back to that saying that we know about if you want to go um, fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. That's exactly it. We should have put that in in our report, (laughs) actually, now that I think of it. But it really does come down to that. And that's why, you know, when you meet up with entrepreneurs, one of the first things that they ask for is often like, or try and, and steer the conversation to is a referral to a new client or a referral to someone that has a skill set or a piece of equipment. It's actually that referral mechanism that is such a powerful thing. It's also a way of keeping you accountable, obviously. Sure. So when when you have blind spots, you know, the, your, your close group of entrepreneurs are the ones that can also point you to that. And then lastly, if I can just um, mention is we've, we, we looked at uh, support networks a lot, like family and friends. And and what we realize is increasingly those family and friends are becoming entrepreneurs themselves because the majority of South Africans are in a position that they have to start a business. And they might not find a job. That we call them the reluctant entrepreneurs. Mm. They might not be able to find a job or the supply of jobs is just not big enough. So they have to start something. So increasingly the spouses, the, the close circle of friends are actually entrepreneurs themselves, which bodes well for the quality of support that you can get from them. Louis, the sense I'm getting, correct me if I'm wrong, is that, like you've mentioned, the solo entrepreneur is the one that's kind of um, feeling the most pressure in terms of not having access to those networks. And I'm wondering, how important then is the availability of time as a factor to all of this? Because we all know that solo entrepreneurs deal with everything, like you've mentioned. They have to run the business. They have to be there. Without them, there is no business. How then do they work around that as an issue? Time is their most prized commodity, really, because the reason why they are not out there networking, generating, trying to generate new relationships and access to uh, new skills and resources is because they don't have time to do that. At least the little time that they have to do that means that the networking opportunities needs to be of a high quality. So they don't want to waste their time. They don't want to sit in two-hour workshops and not necessarily feel that they get the value that they get or attend a networking event and they're not surrounded by people that they that they know they can get value from. There's also then personal constraints. Our researchers identified that some of them just don't feel comfortable to network, to go out there. There's this idea of that I need to put myself out there. And in speaking to some of the entrepreneurs, and we've interviewed thousands of entrepreneurs over the years to get to these insights, is that you designing your product and your business in a way that attracts your customers and attracts other entrepreneurs so that you can showcase the work that you do because they feel more comfortable to showcase their work rather than proactively try and talk about their work, if that makes sense. So the work becomes a conduit for conversations and networks to be built around, which means we can see that even in the skill sets that entrepreneurs are investing in, they're investing in product design skill sets and brand positioning skill sets so that that story becomes almost like a magnet for the right kind of networks and relationships to form around. And you did mention that Heavy Chef looked at, I think, around 10 or so networking types. And I don't know if they are staggered in terms of 
if they leveled in any way of least yeah. um, progressive or least effective or most effective. But I'm wondering, for a solo entrepreneur, is there any way that they, are you seeing any of them, rather, progressing out of the various network levels? So from maybe being a solo entrepreneur to an expert or expert network or hub networks, are you seeing that level of progression and what is driving that and or, or what is inhibi- inhibiting it? The way that we outlined it is try and think about like small circles to bigger circles of networks. So the solar network obviously is just you, the dot alone, but then you've got your group of peers around you, which is the bigger circle. And then your network expands to experts and partners and support and technology and so forth. The ultimate goal and the ultimate kind of network is what we call hub networks. And this is when you actually have a group of entrepreneurs in proximity to each other in a community that work in coordination with each other, that have coordinated learning programs and support programs for each other. They have relationships with other hubs and other communities of entrepreneurs, and they work together to broker relationships and broker deals and broker access to to resources that they might not have had. And importantly, these hubs start developing almost like an identity. The same way that we would think about a hub such as a sophisticated hub like Silicon Valley or there are certain hubs in, in Cape Town as well, Silicon Cape and so forth, or Tel Aviv in Israel. They are at the level of the local community, increasingly in Kailicha, for example. There are groups of artisan entrepreneurs and those in food and in coffee that are increasingly meeting on a regular basis and hosting events and starting to attract more attention, both from other entrepreneurs in the community, but also from the broader like media landscape. You, you, it's, we, we, one of our, the initiatives that we did was we brought uh, Springbok Captain Sia Kalisi to the community because he heard about what's happening there. And we serendipitously got in touch with them through a contact of ours, again, the power of networks, right? And, and, and introduced them to the entrepreneurs in that community. And so a, a entrepreneur hub really is almost the holy grail. Because if you are in proximity to a hub where you are surrounded by support, we are surrounded by daily learning opportunities and growth opportunities, your chances of success isn't guaranteed, but it's exponentially increased. And we know this to be true when you start looking at entrepreneurs who are born into wealthy families or wealthy ecosystems. They just have access to money and skills and expertise that someone that is not born into those environments, uh, for example, can receive. So we have to create those environments. So that's the holy grail is if these if we can get entrepreneurs as individuals to start working as smaller groups and then at the end working as a coordinated, sophisticated hub. That's where we want to ultimately want to um, incentivize entrepreneur communities to grow into. Mm. And then if I'm a, an entrepreneur listening to, to us right now and I'm like, okay, I'm interested and I want to get started, what is your advice for that sort of entrepreneur who might be a bit nervous to put themselves out there and their business out there and start speaking to other people about what they're offering? Where should they start? What is the first step? Yeah, there's two ways. So we call it push and pull, like in the sense that you need to push yourself and just get out of your comfort zone and try and find whether it's your neighbor or whether it's, um, you know, your closest friends and try and coordinate some kind of regular get together and share your learnings between each other in some kind of rhythmic way. It, it really comes down to relentlessly interacting, but you have to push yourself. But there's then a pull component as well is where those entrepreneurs who have networks invite, proactively invite another entrepreneur to come with you. Try and rope them into your circle of friends or circle of people that you meet with. We know from the research that the average entrepreneur has regular access to about three other entrepreneurs on a regular basis. That's not enough. That is definitely not enough. When we look at entrepreneurs that have achieved quite a bit of success, they have regular access to about 12 other entrepreneurs. So that gives you a sense of like the enormity of, of the disconnect. So I think the responsibility is on others to also pull people in. But it's important when we host connections, not just connect for the sake of connecting, but there needs to be value on the table. Because that's, again, the time limit is critical. So or time is a rare commodity. So you need to be explicit about the value that that provides. 
And just lastly on that point on value, how does an entrepreneur assess that this is worth it and it's not? What kind of meter should they be using to gauge how successful uh, a networking event is or important for yeah, them? There's a bit of an art and a science to it all. One degree, you need to have almost like a hunter's mindset, right? So you go to the event and you try and get out of it immediately what you can. You know, you want to get a client and you want to have a connection and you, you try and approach that person and try and open a door. But that can only get you so far because sometimes that also comes across as a bit desperate or as a bit blunt. Um, that is not conducive for building a meaningful relationship with someone. Rather, we propose a farming mentality where you you start adding value to conversations before asking for value from conversations. So what I would suggest when people go to networking events, it's it's a mind shift where you don't think about what you can get from the that networking event. Rather, ask how can you add value to that networking event. So go in, and if you have like a some kind of service or marketing or some kind of resource at your requirement, offer that to other entrepreneurs, and offer value before you get value, so to speak. So that's a bit of a different way of thinking about it, which ultimately would benefit you as well. Well, there you have it. Heavy Chefs CEO Louis Janssen van Rensburg on the role of networking in driving entrepreneurship success. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast and sharing your insights, Louis. Thank you. It's lovely speaking to you. And if they want to download the report, they can go to heavychef.org. It's free to download for anyone going to heavychef.org. That's awesome. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like and follow Small Business Conversations and do not forget to share our episodes. If you want to contribute to the conversation, you can tweet me at machoba underscore A or you can email us at smepodcast at manweb.co.za to share your thoughts and suggestions for future conversations. Until next time, thank you and goodbye. You've been listening to Small Business Conversations with Akona Machoba. To listen to more MoneyWeb podcasts, go to moneyweb.co.za, the MoneyWeb app, or your favorite podcast platforms. MoneyWeb, your trusted source for business and investment insights.